Hey guys, Cube Hamster here with a new video. <laughs> it's a bit later than I uh, than I hoped it would be, but uh, as you guys might have noticed, I come from the Netherlands and we had uh, Saint Nicholas Day, or in Dutch we call it Sinterklaas. Uh, so I had to do some uh, some building for that as well. That uh <laughs> yeah. And if you're curious what the hell Sinterklaas is, and uh, you're not from the Netherlands, it's basically in America and more countries in the world, you have Santa Claus at Christmas. And Santa Claus is based of the Dutch holy uh, person, which is St. Nicholas. And he came originally from, from Turkey and basically gave gifts to small children that behaved uh, good. So that's some brief history, but uh, that's not really what I want to talk about with you guys. I want to talk about pistons. There is two types of pistons. We have the sticky piston and the non-sticky, and if they give power they extend, and if you retract them the sticky one uh, sticky to the block and pulls it back and the other one just uh, pulls back. Now you can also extend uh, multiple pistons, so that's th this is a sticky piston and that sticky piston can then also extend so you can do lots of crazy stuff with it. Um, there's also some blocks that can't be moved like obsidian, um, there's also like chests, uh, jack-o'-lanterns can't be moved, there's also stuff that breaks if you move it, That's for instance leaves break and melons also break and there's a bunch of other stuff um, so as you can see you've got quite some uh, some stuff to talk about I'll be taking you guys through the basics and then slowly uh, but hopefully fast progress to more advanced uh, uses of pistons so then we continue to the ways that you can power pistons. I've got a couple over here next to each other. You can just have redstone straight into a piston and it extends. You can have redstone into a block next to a piston, then it extends. If you have redstone dust, you could have it uh, hook up to like on top of the block that's right next to it and then it also extends. Hook it up to the block next to it. Uh, most of this stuff can also be swapped by repeaters. So repeater into that, repeater into that, repeater on top. Um, if you have redstone dust on the block above the piston, it also extends. If you're powering the block below, it also extends. And this is something I think not many people know, but if you have a repeater uh, on, a, on top of a block above a piston, then it actually also extends. And this is due, due to the, the butt effect, or the block update uh, detection effect which I'll be getting into uh, in a moment. Now moving on, um, what I what I find pistons most useful for is acting as a transistor. So, or yeah. So now we have this piston is extended because it's getting power by this uh, lever, and if I put a block and basically cutting off the power, I can I can basically control it with this one. And at the same time, obviously, this one also controls it. And that brings forth some interesting uh, behaviors. Um, this, for instance, is a XOR gate. These are just outputs to show uh, which one is on at the moment. So a XOR gate uh, ha has the output enabled when, when only one of the two inputs is on and the other one is off. So now two of them, both of them are on, so the output is off. Uh, if I got one off and one on, it gives an output. When both of them are off, it, it doesn't give an output. And when this one, yeah, so that's pretty much everything. And there's a lot of ways to compact uh, your normal logic gauge, which would, would normally take up quite a lot of space with the use of pistons. And this is just one example. And obviously you can invert this and then you have an uh, XNOR gate. Um, so that's stuff like that. Um, also coming back to the transisting thingy, uh, basically redstone dust when, it, when it's trying to go climb up a stair, that's also where you can cut it off. And actually also when it's going down the stair you can cut it off. And this is something I really used in my 
combination lock, just having pistons act like transistors and cutting power here and there and to make uh, something very nice. So yeah, if you ever have like a line and you want to have uh, an, an another uh, input uh, be able to cut the power on this line, a piston is the way to go. Um, okay, well I already mentioned something here, something called the block update detection because this is something that really puzzles new people when they first come in contact with uh, pistons and redstone uh, especially when building contraptions the moment I activate power now <coughs> sorry, nothing happens but as soon as a block next to it gets updated so for instance by placing a block it basically gets power diagonally and this is not a bug, this is not a glitch uh, Notch and Jab, they, they call this a feature and it's not going to get removed and I'm really thankful for that because this behavior is incredibly useful so whenever a block, I could also replace this with a repeater whenever a block diagonally to a piston gets powered uh, it doesn't affect the piston's uh, state only the moment that the state to a block next to it get changed that's when it updates and that's also a similar system here this is basically a but because now if I place a block here it extends but because there is a repeater here the repeater updates and then instantly uh, the block extends um, and this is also very useful to only give power to the block below because if you have um, there's, there's like two ways to have a, a block update so it's like diagonally and if I then update it it updates but also um, not the block above but the block above that then it actually also acts like a, a but and this is something I used uh, yeah for instance in the in the door the the block update that's the the reason I was able to to retract uh, three blocks down from the middle um, and block updates can be many things it can be placing a block but it can also be like uh, grass growing I've seen people uh, using dirt so whenever the dirt block updates if you use a hoe on it uh, oh where is it there's a lot of people that uh, yeah basically made interesting stuff with this and if you have a two on top of each other you can uh, yeah, basically make it make it extend, and then the, because the block is on top, it should disappear again. So that's another thing that I've pe seen people do. Um, what you can also do is you can have uh, furnaces, which is what I used in my saplings as keys uh, video. Whenever a furnace starts or a furnace is done, it gives a block update. So now if I give it power and I get some saplings, for instance and I get some cobblestone put it in the oven have to, yeah, okay, it's already powered put it in the oven and now it it updated because the thing is on fire and if I now turn it off and the, the oven turns off it updates again so that's something uh, interesting as well um, and you can actually make circuits that detects uh, block update uh, updates there's two, gu two kinds of uh, block update circuits there's a circuit that um, basically gives a pulse whenever a block next to it is updated this is a one wide design um, I think it's well known but I just put this together so this this is the block that's getting power and what it does it 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 updates it but when it updates it actually cuts the power which then automatically turns it back to its original state now here is a, a, a toggle butt switch that I that I made. It's one of my designs. Um, it's not one white, but it toggles. So block update and it keeps its state. And now you might be wondering where the hell the output uh, would be, but you could hook it up the output over there. You could hook the hook up the output over here. There's a lots lots of spaces where you could have an output. So if I just put some dust here. Um, no, actually this one has to be a repeater so now I have power and if I then update it again I lose power uh, so this is a toggle 
Apart from it, there's also one white design, CMB Minecraft made a really nice one, we've also seen other ones. Um, but uh, yeah, and don't worry about me going through these really fast because I'll be uploading the world file and if you want you can just uh, check out all this stuff and all the behaviors for yourself. Okay, now we're moving on to uh, yeah something more advanced. Um, I wrote in my Minecraft facts about repeaters. I talked about uh, like uh, ticks, but I wasn't really c completely 100% accurate there because there is two types of ticks. There's a redstone tick, so this would be one redstone tick, two, three, and four. But there's also uh, something else which is called a game tick. And basically, a game tick is half a redstone tick. So two game ticks is the similar to one redstone tick. Now, why is that interesting? Um, well, the thing is, um, redstone redstone gets updated by the game every two game ticks, but pistons get updated every one game tick. So like half a redstone tick. And it takes time for a piston to extend. It takes uh, one or yeah, basically three game ticks or one and a half redstone tick. Um, but the interesting thing is that it takes uh, one game tick to to retract, but it actually updates everything at the same time. So. What happens now is if I extend it, I've got one, two, three, four, five pistons, which basically when they extend, power the next piston. And here I've got five, uh, yeah, basically five redstone repeaters. So that's five ticks. And this being extended would time would be five times one and a half. So would be this would be similar to seven and a half uh, redstone ticks. So this one would effectively extend faster than the other one. So that's one thing. But uh, like I mentioned, the retracting part goes, basically the first one retracts in one game tick. So that's half a redstone tick. But the other ones update immediately. So now when I pull the lever, instantly retracts. So it's a bit slow on the, on the way uh, up but instantly retract. And this is what they call instant wire. So basically if you have really long circuits and you have circuits that have to yeah, go really long, so now you see them extending, but when I uh, pull back the lever, they all go back at the same time. And using this you can have signals that would travel really long and would need a lot of repeaters, so therefore a lot of delay, uh, act instantly. And if you have two of these wires running next to each other, one in the normal state and one in so-called uh, inverted state, so basically it's uh, the other way around, um, I could basically use this to instantly give a pulse, which then re removes, and also when I go the other way, it also instantly gives a pulse. So basically you have two wires next to each other and if you look closely to the, the pistons, so basically the pistons that's extended now gets retracted instantly and then the other ones extend. And then when I pull the lever, seeing as it's inverted by this torch, it goes the other way. So that's basically uh, insta-wire and I've got two lines now which you can also have two, uh, sort of depends on the, on the purpose. But if you're interested in this, I definitely recommend you to experiment with it. This is also what uh, what people use in uh, like the Minecraft computers that is, that are out there, um, t t in order for the computer to uh, yeah basically act fast. The redstone delay every repeater adds uh, 0 0.1 second is too long, and uh, having these pistons really helps cutting down the time for uh, commands to actually get prompted by the by the by the Minecraft computer. So um, that's Instawire. Um, be sure to check it out. It's cool. I personally, because I'm not really into the whole electronics uh, department, uh, or at least not yet, haven't really <laughs> checked into it yet. 
Um, I, I, I haven't really found any use for this because most of my circuits either don't really, where it doesn't really matter that there is a delay and um, some circuits actually need a delay and I don't have wires traveling 300 blocks that would need like 20 repeaters uh, to function. But um, yeah, if you have a long wire, this is the way to go. And if you have a really long wire and you want it to this to have like on off state you can just toggle or hook this up to a very fast T flip flop and then whenever it pulses you change the state so that's something you could do um, moving on to the next bit um, I already mentioned that if you have multiple pistons you could extend multiple pistons so this is like with levers this is a triple piston extender. Now extending is, is is not really an issue but retracting however is a bit more uh, complicated because there's two ways of going about doing this. I could go uh, pull this one back, pull this one back, extend, pull back, pull back, extend, pull back, extend, pull back. So that's quite a couple steps. There's also another way that people go about with doing this that's by okay extension is the same but <coughs> the interesting thing is that when a piston, uh, basically these repeaters are just to show which uh, which lever is pulled. But when when a repeat or sorry when a piston gets pulled into uh, a powered uh, situation, it instantly extends. So now this one is powered, and as soon as I pull this piston into it, it extends. Um, so I could also do that here again have this one powered and then if I pull it into it it extends. Now this one has to retract and again if I power this and I pull it into it it extends. So that's also a way of going about at retracting uh, these things. Um, I made like a compact sequencer which is what they call which which basically does what I just did there with levers only um, yeah it sort of does it automatically with one lever switch um so now when I pull the the or yeah pull the lever it extends the the pistons and now most of the circuit is powered and the moment that I basically go back it retracts it and it does what I just did there with the levers. Although in this circuit I'm not using oh I'm not using this effect. Um yeah, basically doing it without that. Although, I mean, this this circuit is I made it a while ago, and if I would go about doing it this again, I would probably use this because it's yeah, it's an interesting use. Um, circuit like this also has another name. Uh, this is basically a sequencer which gives power to um, yeah different blocks at different times and the way it works is you have you have to worry about two different things basically I've got a couple of pistons here and it looks complicated but uh, I'm going to try and basically show how it works um, basically it takes one and a half redstone tick to extend a, a piston um, knowing that that means that if if I flip this lever the first piston to get power is the one I'm pointing at right now it, because it, there's one redstone tick before it gets power. Now if that redstone or if that repeater powers the piston it will push the block over here which means that this would now be the, the second piston that needs power and it has to be two ticks later than the other one because it takes one and a half redstone tick to extend a piston. So I've got two ticks, one tick, and then it should extend. Now when that's extended, we're three ticks uh, along the, the time path now, um, I need another one to uh, extend, which is um, this piston. And the way I do that is I've got a repeater, the repeater that I already used for this one, one tick, also powers this redstone dust and then has four tick delay. So in total it takes five ticks for this piston to extend. 
Now then the block would be over there and then finally um, I've basically I've got one tick now I go down this part five ticks and uh, once I'm there I've got two more ticks here so that's seven ticks and then the final one gets extended so that would mean the block would be over there now let's actually pull the lever and see if it does that so this is a sequencer which um, extends the block there now extending was the, the easy part and now uh, comes the hard part because basically what we had before where we could just uh, yeah basically so we had one three five seven but now when I when I deactivate the lever because there are seven ticks of power in the repeater it would take seven ticks for this uh, piston to retract and if I didn't have any other repeaters it would take five seconds for this piston to retract three seconds for uh, sorry I'm calling it seconds but I mean three redstone ticks for this piston to retract and one redstone tick for this one to retract now <coughs> that's obviously not going to work because that would mean that this one would retract then that one then that one and then the block would just end up where I'm pointing right now so what what you do is uh, I've got seven ticks on this one that means I need nine ticks I'm just going two ticks at a time I need nine ticks on on this piston so what I have now is I've got one goes like there then I've got four which gives five which powers this uh, powers this uh, redstone dust over here, which gives power to these uh, repeaters, which is another four tick delay. So that means I've got I had seven in this one, and now I have nine uh, nine like this in this piston. And I've got nine here. I'm going to need eleven in this one. So let's actually take a look at that. So we've got one, two, six. 10, 11. So there's now 11 ticks before this piston retracts. And then finally, uh, I need 13 for this piston. And this piston is also getting powered by this block. So let's take a look at that as well. So we got 2, 6, 9, 13. So 13 ticks for this piston to retract. So now when I deactivate the lever, it basically goes back the same path. Um, this is sort of the way uh, you have to think in order to do this to to do that sort of stuff. Um, and the other thing you need occasionally is that the moment um, the moment that uh, power gets cut, uh, sometimes you need a pulse. And let me actually go about it like this. So now the moment that I give power, nothing happens. <coughs> and the moment I remove power from this circuit, which you can see by because that redstone repeater goes off, the moment I remove power, it gives a short pulse. And that's basically, if we go back to my triple uh, retraction circuit, that's basically what I have here. So when I extend it, you saw that nothing happened here. But when I retract, basically when I cut power to the circuit, if for a short moment, it gives a short pulse. And that's because they're basically the, sim the similar circuit that which I had over there is is actually also over here so in the circuit itself whenever I cut the power of the circuit somewhere along in the circuit it gives a pulse which I redirect to in this case this piston to pull it back and actually also in the piston next to it so let me just do it again so now we you have to pay attention the moment I cut the power of the the, the lever over there it will first give a pulse to this block and then the signal will also travel like this and then we'll give uh, a pulse to the block next to it so pulse pulse which is basically pulling it back there and then pulling up back the block as well so that's something um, if you have like multiple repeaters uh, sorry multiple pistons and you need pulses here and there this is the circuit over there which you can use 
Um, and then going on to it, it looks ridiculously big, but that's just because I want to show um, how it works. Because the this is basically the the jab door, so it it's completely uh, concealed. So if I have it blocks oh blocks like that, it's just a wall, and basically that's where the door opens. And the reason I made it so ridiculously big is because I want to show you that in fact what the way this jab door works is exactly the same as this complicated piston extender thingy. So basically what happens, let me just cut the power, um, we're pushing a piston in a block with uh, like four, four other pistons and the moment I give power to the circuit, it goes like this, it, the moment I give power to the circuit, it it takes um, two redstone ticks because basically it goes travels like this. Two redstone ticks for all these pistons to extend, and on the other side, obviously because the, the signal travels like this as well, also two redstone ticks for this one to extend. Now these red blocks down here and up here, they take three ticks to get power. So what happens is when you flip the lever, first these pistons extend, get pushed into uh, basically below and above the, the red blocks I mentioned there, and then they get power. So that's similar to what we had, had over here. Basically one piston gets power before the other one. Um, but now when we're retracting, so we had two ticks and three ticks, that would mean that if if I would not have any other circuitry, when I remove the power, it would first basically retract these pistons, these four and these four over here, and then it would cut the power on these red blocks. And in order to go around that and not having that happen, I have sort of a longer delay uh, going on here. And actually this is at 4, it could also be 3, it probably wouldn't be a problem. So what's going to happen now is as soon as I cut the power, uh, after 3 redstone ticks, the, the pistons in the middle that are extended now are going to lose power and are going to retract. And then uh, 5 ticks later, because I have like a longer delay going here, 5 ticks later, then the, these pistons are going to lose power and these pistons. So the moment I, that's the way the jab door works, the moment I cut the power, first the middle pistons retract after three ticks, and then five ticks later, that's when the, the outside ones retract. And yeah, you could, uh, CMB recently made a three by three door, which sort of works on a similar system. And yeah, in a sense, the, the five times six door, which I posted a couple, a uh, couple days ago, or yeah, <laughs> last week, weekend, um, works on a similar system. So basically I've got circuits that give delays, pulses, and extending and retracting is, uh, yeah, you need extra circuitry for that. But uh, yeah, so much for sequencers and retractors. Now, oh, moving on. Uh, I already sort of showed you this piece of uh, yeah, circuitry uh, which gave a, a pulse whenever I cut the power but uh, what I actually want to do let me see if it works already no, it needs a bit more delay is um, the moment I have it set up like this and, and I must say that the repeaters and delays and stuff act a bit weird with this circuit. Um, let me just show it anyways. Whenever a piston is not powered and gets a, a one tick pulse, that's all it has. What actually happens is it, it doesn't have um, time enough to extend and retract because 
the reason it can't is that the moment it extends, uh, extending takes one and a half redstone tick, and retracting takes uh, only half a redstone tick. So what, what, what's happening is that actually, if you look at the, the pulse, uh, just to show that it's a one tick pulse, so basically the repeaters, um, you saw one tick, it, it can't pull it back fast enough. Um, and that has some, uh, I mean, you can use it in indoors and circuitry and stuff. It, it, it has interesting properties. But uh, uh, sort of another interesting use for this is having it act as a T, a toggle flip flop. So if I have a button, and uh, what this circuit does is it, or let me actually show this one first because it, it, this one is. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's easier to see what's going on. This is a one wide T flip flop and the way it works is as soon as I press the button it's going to give a one tick um, pulse to the piston which will then basically put the block over here extending the circuit. So when I press the button it leaves the block there so that's the one state and if I put a pulse in there again it, re it pulls back the block. So this is a very small and reliable T flip flop and all you need is a one tick pulse to a sticky piston. Now basically here what I did is I sort of wrapped this circuit uh, around in a corner um, and now this, this is the block that's getting pushed and pulled so extends retracts and personally I I really like this uh, I really really like this T flip flop design and that one as well and basically if you want to you could turn this into a T flip flop as well all you need is um, dust so there now there there's the dust and if I swap this with a button So now the, bus, the dust gets power, and now it doesn't. And you see, even with the button, it gives the one tick delay, which I mentioned, that which was necessary earlier. So, so much for that piston behavior. Uh, also, really something that probably has more applications, and if you're interested, just have to experiment a bit with it. But it's definitely something nice. Okay, now moving on to the last bit of uh, yeah of this pistons fact video um, I have a piston clock here which sort of works on a similar system uh, like over there so basically uh, if I place a block here on this piston what's gonna happen is it's gonna give power to this piston which is gonna extend push the block over there. Now the block's over here, so now this repeater gets power and if I feed that power into the piston it will push it back and basically it will go back and forth like that. This is a two tick alternating clock. Now um, there's obviously many uses for this but I really really like it. I like to... Uh, oh, need a block there. So that's the clock going. But I really like this in the sense that it can be used to basically spin around blocks. So now I've got these black and white blocks and they're getting power at different uh, moments. And what you could also do, I, I, the, way, the way I hooked it up now is basically I've got uh, a two tick delay between these two. Um, that's because there's a two tick, it's two tick alternating clock. Um, and when I cut the power, it uh, yeah it keeps going because I've got these repeaters here, but it stops. And you could use this for block swapping, um, but the main thing this is being used for is for complicated piston uh, actions. Um, the thing is that if you have, let me get a repeater. If you have a repeater hooked into a 
a non-transparent block it will basically feed the power to the dust behind it however if you uh, have a transparent block which is now glowstone as well but normally for piston feed tapes which is what they call that very big contraption over there um, glass does not transmit the power from the repeater now what's that useful for here I have a five uh, piston uh, extending uh, or basically five sticky pistons and a block and in order to extend it I'd have to do this 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 um, which is sort of doable not really the issue but in order to uh, retract it uh, let me just do it uh, you need you need to do quite uh, quite some work uh, in order to uh, retract it oh that one actually doesn't have to be uh, uh, I always in order to figure this stuff out I always just l use levers and try and figure out uh, yeah basically <laughs> which which one needs power um, at what moment so that's the retraction you saw that took quite a bit of operations and if you might have noticed I've got some glass and um, glass and wool blocks here the the black and the glass one is for the extension so uh, for the extending and retracting and the orange and glass is for when I have to stop the, the clock so what's gonna happen now at first the first step nothing's gonna happen and if I spin this feed tape which basically has this giant uh, glass wool thing wrapped around it so basically you see it here what happens is that the first step I see a black block there so a black block you already see it there is going to get moved up and it's going to give power to this uh, piston so that would be the first step and the second step this one would still have power and then the next one and then in the next step this one will get power and then the next step this one would get power and now we're over here this one gets power and then the next step this one loses power and then the step beyond that um, this one gets power and this one loses power and the step beyond that this one loses power this one gets power and this one loses power so now we're over here then that one gets power gets retracted that one gets power gets retracted so now we're over here then this one loses power this one gets power this one loses power this one gets power this one loses power so now we're over here then this one gets power this one loses power this one gets power this one loses power now we're over here now this one loses power this one gets power this one loses power now we're over here and then finally or not finally <laughs> this one gets power this one loses power and then we're back at the first state which is everything is turned off so that's basically with the help of these wool blocks and glass blocks because I'm spinning it and basically I have a repeater with a block in front of it so uh, power if there's a glass block block um, if there's a glass block nothing happens if there's a uh, solid uh, black block for instance it gets power so by al alternating between that I can basically tell tell it when it has to uh, extend to retract and then the orange line whenever it's an orange line basically have that hooked up to a transistor which I mentioned earlier so whenever this block gets power basically if I press it it will activate the piston and basically activate the clock because as soon as I put a block there uh, it will activate the clock which I also have over here this is pretty much similar now actually let me do it so extending one step at a time and oh small egg spike there um, 
that's the reason I don't really like these uh, feed tapes and that I did not use them in my uh, five times six piston door. It probably would have made the circuit a lot smaller, but um, it yeah for me it causes a bit of lag. Now the reason the piston stopped or the the feed tape stopped is because of this glass block over block over here, um, and glass block is there so it cuts the power to the clock and stops it. So now it's fully extended, and that was the easy part. And now for the, the retracting. So that's basically what I just did with levers and. Yeah, if you want to find out how to do it, all you have to do is place some levers next to a whole bunch of pistons and uh, just experiment and see if you can find uh, the fastest way of doing this. So that's a Penta, Penta piston extension uh, circuit. Oh, some weird stuff happening there. <laughs> Okay, but uh, yeah, it works. It is it is reliable, um, also on uh, multiplayer servers. But yeah, like I mentioned, it causes lag. So, like over there, I have a two. T uh, I'm using a two tick delay alternating clock. So I've got two tick delays between the different pistons. So I've got pistons being powered pushing it left, pistons being powered pushed lower, which activate two ticks sooner then I've got uh, three tick pushing it to the right and one tick pushing it up so it's alternating and in the middle I just have a redstone torch here because these repeaters have to be on it all the time and the moment that there's a block in front of it let me actually just press it so you can see what's going on so five seven nine and then if we go back and it's fully retracted again. So that's how this works and yeah the first time I saw this was on Disco's programmable piano and it's the exact same concept only instead of uh, he didn't hook it up to or he actually did also hook it up to pistons for the, the keyboard keys going up and down but he also hooked it up to uh, note blocks and if you ever downloaded this map uh, I tried it but it was so incredibly laggy because there was so many pistons going that I, I yeah the song didn't really came out nicely uh, for me um, so uh, if you have a really good computer and you want to do really complicated stuff then this is the way to go and if you want to do really complicated stuff and you want the challenge and you want to set up like the doors like I did or something bigger and better then sequencers like this is the way to go but uh, yeah pistons are awesome and for me I didn't really I had Minecraft already but I got bored of it and then pistons got released and I was like all over it again I was like yay finally moving blocks so uh, yeah, it's pretty sweet. Um, it's been a long video. <laughs> Thank you a lot uh, if you uh, stayed all the way to the end. Uh, I'll put up the world file in the description if you want to take a look at some of these uh, circuits. I'm pretty sure I've not mentioned everything pistons can do, but I uh, yeah I tried to yeah basically talk about the most uh, important stuff. Um, also, there's someone on the Minecraft forum.net uh, forum called Gristale which did uh, basically has a, a layout of all these yeah basically logic gates because he also you can also make AND gates and implies gates and full bit adders and stuff with uh, with pistons um, so I also put a link in my description for that uh, forum post it's really useful um, so be sure to check that out as well and yeah, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you guys later. Bye bye.